Hey everyone, uh, this is Sadie. I am from The Remote Nurse. It is an online community and job board that helps connect nurses, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants to remote jobs. And today I am interviewing Deanna. She runs the Case Management Institute and she has, she has like all kinds of knowledge about case management um, that I'm going to go ahead and let her give her bio and we'll go from there. Okay, so as Sadie said, my name is Deanna. I have been in healthcare for well over 25 years. I stopped counting at 25 because it doesn't really matter after that. I don't think so. Um, the last several years in case management, um, started the Case Management Institute and kind of go, gone on from there. Um, so I know you have a lot of questions that your listeners have asked. Yeah. And we probably want to get started with those. Yeah. So this video is just going to be kind of an intro into case management with a little bit flair on the remote side of that, but also just case management as a specialty area in general. Um, so I pulled the audience of my community and we got a bunch of frequently qu asked questions that we're going to go through. And I think that'll give you the best overview of what it is and all the little details that everyone already asked or always asks. So the first one I always get is what is case management and what do they do? <laughs> the funny thing was like, I didn't know what case management was when I got the job. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Funny thing. Um, and the person who hired me was like, oh, you'll do fine. Yeah. We, we, you know, basically what she told me was I had all the soft skills and all the things like that. She's like, I can train you to do the case management. You have the, you have the background you need. I'm like, okay. But um, so I did learn what case management is and I would be happy to share that with everybody watching. So basically um, case managers take on a variety of roles. And I think the easiest way to explain what case, what case management is to start off by saying that you're an educator, you're a problem solver. Um, you have to identify barriers to care, barriers to people being their healthiest that they can be, and then figure out figuring out ways to overcome those barriers with them. Um, you're a patient advocate above everything else. Uh, you're a liaison between the patient and everyone else, sometimes their family, <laughs> um, the physician, the insurance company, the hospital, doctor providers, pharmacy, DME company, you're pretty much the kind of like the hub of the wheel between the patient and all of these people. And you also help people, patients, clients, as we like to call them, to um, transition through the healthcare system. So the way that I usually like to start off when I was explaining this to people was imagine like you're a healthy, normal, healthy person. And all of a sudden you have like this really bad diagnosis like cancer. And so you went from seeing your family doctor once a year to all of a sudden having an oncologist and a radiologist and a surgeon and a family doctor, and you're seeing a dietitian and all these different people. And you don't know like who to listen to, who's telling you what, where to go next, who to ask the questions that you have to. So we kind of help to navigate all of that. We are the, as I like to say, the hub of the wheel. Um, and I have, I, I'm thinking that most of your audience is interested in remote positions. So depending on where you work is really what you do as a case manager, how much you incorporate each of these roles as educator, as facilitator, all of these things. So um, just to give an idea about what a remote case manager would do is basically there is a case management process, believe it or not, just like the nursing process. You know, we have the ad pie. <laughs> they have a case management process. Um, it's not as standardized, meaning it's not like across the board where everybody does the exact same thing, especially when you look at the different literature out there, which can make it confusing. But basically, they identify um, patients or clients that would benefit from case management services. They do an assessment, which is a very different assessment than your nursing assessment. You're not listening to lung sounds and doing the physical assessment. It's more of a psychosocial assessment. And then you're making a plan. During that assessment, you're looking for barriers, and then you're making a plan to overcome those barriers. Then you're implementing the plan, monitoring and evaluating the implementation of that plan, and then you're closing them eventually because you want them to be able to take care of themselves. So, I think that's a lot, <laughs> but I hope it kind of gives a little bit. We can go into the day-to-day -day if you want, um, or we can just kind of take it from there. Yeah, we could take it from there. Yeah, it's case managers seem to be like the Jill of all trades. <laughs> they, you guys, yes. like case managers seem to do everything. It's like whatever kind of is needed to be done to follow the plan of care, the case manager is there. <laughs> like doing it. Yeah. So there's a lot Basically, when the doctor's stuck and says, I have a problem, 
Yeah, yeah, I have a problem. We can't get this patient discharged because they don't have this. And then it's like, call the case manager and she will solve the problem. So yeah, you have to like, people ask, like solving like, problems. Yeah. For like a day to, day in the life. Of course you can give that, but sometimes it's like, you don't know, <laughs> you, no. you don't know what's going to come up. Like it's no. kind of just, you're fighting fires <laughs> everywhere in a organized way, of course, but it's not as like linear. I think as some people think, you know, you just want to know what you do, but um, you do a lot of stuff. And sometimes I think it's like, you're learning as you go too. You've never done Absolutely. this before for a patient. So like, okay, now I'm doing this today. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to be able to research and just like to do things. Like if you want a script to follow all the time, case management is not the job for you because there is never, no two patients are ever the same. They can have the same diagnosis and they can have the same treatment plan, but the support that they have can be completely different. You might be sending one patient home with a family who is, they're going to be staying with them 24 seven and somebody else who's going to a homeless shelter. Like obviously yeah. those two patients need totally different things when they go, they get, get discharged. That's true. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully that's good enough for people <laughs> to know. <laughs> Kind of. Um, so the second one I always get for, especially for remote jobs, but in general, how do you get into case management if you don't have case management experience? That is the $20,000 question, isn't it? Um, everybody, there are tons of case management jobs out there, I will just say, but they all want somebody with experience. And um, it, obviously they can't, case management is getting old older in that we're like a growing population. So most case managers will be retiring and they have to bring in new people. So organizations are going to be forced to hire people that do not have experience. So number one, apply anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I know you've said that before, but things that you can do, um, if you've been a nurse, you've most likely done a lot of things that can transfer into case management. There's still a lot of things you have to learn, but if you can at least highlight the things that you've done, like patient education, we talked about that's one of the things that case managers do. So highlight that. Highlight any phone triage that you did. Like when I worked in labor and delivery, we would have patients call in and say, I think I'm in labor. And we would phone triage them over the phone. And like, you know, when they're five minutes apart, did your water break, all that kind of stuff. So that was you know, something that you can highlight. If you worked in an ER or an outpatient clinic, you might've taken those type of calls with people, or you might've called people the day after their procedure in an outpatient clinic. So like highlight that, highlight things like discharge planning that you've done, especially difficult discharges. If you've helped to facilitate that, um, anytime that you've advocated for a patient, you want to really hi highlight that. Um, anything that you've done to avoid readmissions, like we all know those patients that we call the frequent flyers that are in all the time. And if you were able to like assess and find out why they were in and actually put set something up, like maybe they couldn't get their prescriptions delivered and you were able to find a pharmacy that delivered to their area and that patient didn't come back anymore, or at least not as frequently, that's something you want to highlight. Um, sitting on quality improvement. So this is something like I tell people that sometimes it's a long, a long range plan to get into case management. So like if there's a QI or QA or whatever you want to call it project going on, volunteer for that. So you can add that to your resume. Um, super users for computers. Like we are, our computer, we, I always say we, re we replace the stethoscope with a computer. So you're on the computer a lot. So you need to know how to navigate a computer. So if you can show that you have mastery of that because you were a super user for your system, that's always great. And just getting some computer skills, adding that to, we don't, as nurses, we don't think to say, oh, I've, I took a class in Word or Excel or something like that, but that is something that you would want to add if you're going for a case management job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does that kind of answer that? Yeah. Yeah. And I would add like for the remote jobs, it's harder to get these jobs just because they're a lot more independent. So that's why a lot of the, especially the remote jobs want you to have more experience um, because, you know, it's like, it's a little bit more distanced from being like on site at the hospital. Maybe you have other case managers with you and support. Um, whereas at home, it's a little bit more independent and just um, you kind of need to know what you're doing <laughs> or you don't and you have a little bit harder of a time adjusting. adjusting. Um, and then the yeah. other thing, sometimes with case management remote jobs, one way to try to wiggle in there without experience is if you kind of focus on your specialty area because there's a lot of different specialty case management areas. Um, like transplant and oncology and behavioral health and stuff. So sometimes I, I see that they, they might wiggle you in that way because you already know a core foundation of that 
that specialty area. So they might, you know, allow you to come in and get trained on the case management part. Whereas a generalized case management job, there's so many people applying, there's, it's bound to have somebody who has case management experience. Like, so if you can kind of utilize the specialty area, sometimes that can work too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's like a little kind of, I don't know if you call it like a back doorway in, but if you're, if it's part of your like five-year plan that you know you want to get home in the next five years, there are some things that you can definitely do. Like working in home care or hospice, those titles are usually case manager, especially in hospice, you're definitely a case manager. So if you work for a home hospice agency, you can actually do that for a year, put case manager on your resume, and now you have case management experience. Um, also working on site in your local hospital for like one to two years, now you have the case management experience. Um, I actually think the hospice is actually even a little bit better because you're working remotely. Like you're not working with team members right there beside you all the time. So you have to show that you can think independently. Um, joining organizations like the Case Management Society of America, or whatever local case management organizations are near you, going to the meetings, attending the meetings, talking to the people so that when they say, hey, we're hiring, you're like, really? I've been wanting to get in. And they're like, hey, she's I've seen her at the meetings. She must really be interested. She's not just a applying to everything. Um, get, com get computer experience. So you can definitely put that in your resume. And then learn to speak the jargon. Those are some of the things that kind of like will help you backdoor in because when you can put when you can put the words on your resume, like we talked about earlier, but then not only that, when you get the interview, you can talk like you understand case management because you've attended the meetings, you've talked to other case managers, and you understand that we don't call it discharging the patient at home. We call it transitioning the patient to the next level of care. So now if you can say that, you're talking like a wow. case <laughs> manager. You're not sticking out like a sore thumb, like who's this person over here talking about this? Yeah, so it's just the way that, you know, just, just like any other area, um, you know, lawyers have their way of talking, doctors have a way of talking, and case managers have a way of talking. So if you can talk like one, people are probably gonna think that you can walk the walk because you can talk the talk. <laughs> that is true. Um, okay, so the next one, is there any like certification or training you can take to land a, uh, well, land a case management job in general? Yeah, yeah, I, I love this question because I get it so often. So I'm really glad that you asked it so we can kind of clarify it and put it out there. Um, you, you have to have experience to even sit for the certification exam so that you have to fill out an application. And on the application, you have, at the time that you fill out the application, you have had to have at least one year of, of experience. So a lot of people come to me and say, oh, I want to pass the certification so I can get a job. And I'm like, eh. unfortunately, that's not the way it works. Yeah. But um, that being said, you can take some classes, courses, um, continuing education. There are things that you can do to get more versed and to be a little bit better. Um, I guess one of the things that I would I would caution people from, and and this is this is my advice only, um, but that is a lot of people have come to me and said I'm going to go get my master's so I can become a case manager, and I'm like no no please don't do that. And the reason is this: a master's in case management is great for somebody who's already a case manager and wants to get to the director level and above. But unfortunately, if you have no case management experience and you have a master's, the entry level positions aren't going to pay and they're going to throw your resume out like without even looking at it. They're like, oh, their master's prepared. They're going to want this much money. Our entry level positions only pay this much money where we're training you how to do case management. So that's that's my opinion mm -hmm. in what I've seen. So just take it with a grain of salt. But I would say taking some courses where you are going to learn the things we talked about earlier, like the jargon and what case management is and the case management process and all of those types of things um, can definitely be helpful. Um, to get into a home hospice position or a home healthcare position, you really don't need anything other than your ability to be a nurse. Um, and then you kind of learn the case management aspect of it. It's a great way to transition. I feel it's one of the best ways wow. to transition into, because you're using your, you're learning the case management skills, but, but you're still using your clinical skills. So it's like a 50, 50. And then you can kind of transition that into just case management. Oh, okay. All right. I never even thought of that. So it would just be like applying to like a hospice nurse position. It's not like a hospice case manager position. Like just okay, hospice it in itself has case yeah. management within it is what you're kind yeah. of saying. So yeah. usually a home hospice agency, they usually call them hospice case managers because you're ordering the DME, you're contacting the doctor, you're usually the 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 go-to person for everything when a patient enters hospice. So you're actually, they're going to call you before they even call the doctor. So you are managing everything. Um, 
And, you know, that being said, there's a lot to learn about case management. And that's why sometimes it is good to take a class, um, you know, read magazine articles, you know, CMSA has a publication that they put out and, you know, just getting to learn things because, you know, as we mentioned before, there's a case management process, just like there is a nursing process, but there's also legal and practice standards that you kind of need to be aware of before you go in. In fact, it's always good if you know the legal and practice standards beforehand and you're interviewing with a company, you can kind of weed out the bad companies because they're like, oh yeah, don't worry about that. You don't need that license and that where that patient is. And it's like, uh, yeah, you do. And, but unfortunately, because sometimes case managers were, they were like really good at this inpatient L&D nurse role. So they made them the, the head of the case management department and they don't even know case management. And we've had those people come to us and and take courses so that they can actually learn it. Cause they're like, oh man, I've been telling my people the wrong thing. I was like, sorry. Um, so learning things like that. Yeah. Okay. Learning basics of utilization management, like what is covered. Like as nurses, we don't care. Our patients in the bed, they say, go start an IV, you start an IV. You don't ask them, do they have insurance? What kind of insurance they have, what their deductibles? You don't care. As a case manager, that's usually the first question you ask is, do you have insurance? what kind of insurance do you have so that we know if it needs a pre-authorization, doesn't need a pre-authorization, can we send them to rehab or can we only send them home with home health? What does their benefit cover? So mm -hmm. um, there's a knowing what, how you can meet the criteria for certain levels of care. Like you can't send anybody to rehab. They have to meet a certain criteria for insurance to cover it. So these are the kind of things that you can learn before you get a job by taking classes and courses and things like that. Um, and then making it a little bit easier to land that position. Because again, once again, you know all these things, you can talk about them um, during your interview and it makes you shine. Next one, um, is there any difference between like case management and care management and like care coordination? And sometimes all these words are used interchangeably. Is that true? Or is there like some clear delineation between those that you know of? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's a great question because depending on the organization you work for, they can call it any of the above. And so when you're applying for a position, you might think you're applying for a care coordinator, but it's actually a case manager, or you might think you're applying for case manager and it's actually a care coordinator. If you want to get real minute on the details, like a case manager pretty much encompasses all of those. So um, for example, utilization management is one of the things people always ask, like, what's the difference between a utilization manager and a case manager? Um, case managers can do utilization management as one part of their job. They can also do care coordination as one part of their job. So a care coordinator role is one of the roles a case manager does. They can also do chronic care management because some of their clients are going to have chronic issue, health issues like heart disease or diabetes. So they might be doing that along with the other case management that they're doing. Um, so I usually say case management encompasses all of those other roles, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the setting that they're working in. And each of those does a part of what a case manager does. Okay. Does that make it as clear as mine? Yeah, that's, what, that's kind of what I see too. It almost seems like case management encompasses a lot more and then care management, care coordination can sometimes be, yeah, pieces of that. Um, and then in other companies, they do really use it interchangeably, but exactly kind of the trend I've noticed too. Um, so another question I get a lot is, can LPNs do case management? Yes. So again, depending on where, who the employer is and what they call case management, they would, some places do hire LPNs for case managers for the most part, if they are an organization that, ha that is accredited they cannot hire an LPN as a quote unquote case manager. And that's because a really big part of case management is the assessment. So there's an initial assessment that is done when you first admit the case, the patient to case management. And it's a very in-depth assessment. And then there's also an ongoing assessment that you do each time that you are in contact with the patient. So because Kate, the assessment is such a large part and the LPN license does not allow for an independent assessment, that is where that can come in, that issue can come in. Um, sometimes they will play a supportive role, like doing follow-up calls or something like that. So some places will hire them and have them support, kind of like in the hospital where they'll help the 
RN, they may help the case manager. Um, and chronic care management is different because usually there's an initial assessment done for chronic care management, and then they're just following up. Like the first week, you're going to follow up and you're going to ask these set of questions. So it's more guided and expected um, that they're going to follow a certain course, where with case management, there's no course. You hope they follow a course, but yeah, it's, yeah, there, okay. nothing's normal. <laughs> in yeah, case and I so see that. So you're assessing. Yeah, in remote jobs that I'm seeing, um, yeah, case management oftentimes wants the RN. Some occasionally it'll be open to LPNs, but it seems like care coordination and care management are more likely to hire LPNs and chronic care management. Um, so those are the ones I recommend LPNs kind of target more. Um, yeah, we covered the questions. Um, yeah, and then I just want to give them more info on what you offer and then what I offer so that they can actually find these jobs and maybe land these jobs too. That'd be great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So the first thing that I have is um, it's a free one CEU. Basically, it's a webinar, like a, a course, a course, I guess is what we call it. So it's one hour and you just learn about utilization management and case management and what the difference between the two are and which one, like my goal is by the end of you watching that, you're going to be like, oh, case management is what I would prefer or utilization management is what I prefer or neither of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, neither of them are for me because sometimes learning what you don't want can be very beneficial. And so it's free. It, you get one nursing CE for watching it. And like I said, by the end, hopefully, you know, like if either of these are options that you want to take. Um, if you do decide that you want to take one of those options, we have courses for both. We have a foundations of case management course which teaches all those things that we talked about earlier. They teach us about Medicare, workers' comp, um, how to know which insurance is primary, COBRA. Um, and those are all the scary things. It also teaches like behavioral health concepts because you are dealing with behavioral things. Like you have to, behavioral change theories, like how to get people to adhere to treatment plans. You learn about the social determinants of health and how to you know, create plans to help with those. So you learn all of that stuff along with just the very basics of what case management is. You learn about, oh, there's case management standards of practice. So you know how there's nursing standards of practice? There's case management standards of practice. And if you call yourself a case manager, you are held to those standards, whether you know it or not. So we teach you about those so that, Lord forbid, if anything ever happens legally, you are covered and you at least know what they are. And we teach you about accreditation standards and all that, all that stuff that we didn't even know existed and you didn't know you needed to know, we teach you. Um, we have two ways of learning that. One um, is the course and one is a book. The book is at the formatter now. By the time you watch this, hopefully it'll be published. Um, it, the benefits of the book is it's cheap and it's a great reference to have on your desk at, when you start working as a case manager because it's gonna like give you all those things like, oh, I know I read that in the book. I need to go look and see it so you can like look it up. Um, the downfalls of the book is that no hiring manager cares that you read a book. Like you can't really put on your resume like, oh, I read the book. <laughs> like, okay. So, you know, if um, the, the benefit of the course, there's several benefits to the course. One is you get an instructor. And when I say an instructor, it's not just any instructor. We have like the best of the best. Um, one of our instructors actually is my mentor who taught me case management, if that means anything. <laughs> which apparently it does to a lot of people. And the other um, is she was a, a, a trainer at, a, at an organization, at a managed care company, an insurance company. She trained all the new case managers. So she's one of our um, trainers. So, and we have hiring managers. Like we have people like that know what you need to know because they hired these people. And so they're really good. Um, so you get one-on-one. -on -one. Basically you email them, they email you back. You, you have they're so dedicated. I love them. They are just so dedicated to making sure that we have good case managers out there that kind of carry on the name because they were the people who kind of started all of this, you know, 20 years ago and they want to make sure. So you get these awesome people. That's part of your, um, of what you get. Plus you can kind of, you get a certificate of completion, you get nursing CE credit, and you can kind of put on your resume and on your LinkedIn profile that I have completed this course, which looks a little bit better than I read a book. So <laughs> There's assignments that your instructor will work with you on. Um, and again, the goal of that is multi-focused. One is, again, by the end of this, we want you to know that you're entering a profession that you really want. We don't want you to quit your job and be like, I hate it. I quit a job and now I have a job that I hate even more. 
and the, we want you to know that you love it and that you would be good at it. And we want to make your first year so much easier, so much easier. Um, so that's the goal. In fact, we've had a lot of people that were case managers for a year or under and have like insisted on taking the course. And I'm like, no, it's for people who haven't gotten in it yet. And they're like, no, I need this because I didn't learn it on the job and I'm floundering. And if I don't learn it, I'm going to, I'm not going to succeed. And then they did. And so that makes me feel really happy. So that's my, that's my story. The other, <laughs> the other thing we have is a utilization management course. And for this, it was real important for me you talk to see your clients and you're doing that kind of thing. But with utilization management, everything, you are on the computer, the whole entire shift. And not only are you on the computer, you have to be able to navigate between multiple screens and multi be doing multiple programs up and all of this. So we really wanted to make sure that people who graduated from our course had as much of an experience of what it's like. Again, we don't want you to go get a job and then be like, oh my gosh, I, I can't figure out how to get from one computer program to the other and I'm lost. So we made it, we have like a simulation lab and we've partnered with MCG, which is one of the top companies. There's two big companies, Interqual and MCG that do, um, that help determine medical necessity. So it's not just some random like, nope, we're denying it or yes, we're approving it. <laughs> As much as we would like to think we're that important, no, there's actually criteria that have to be met. And these help us to figure out if that criteria is met. And there's software programs, and it's a learning curve to learn how to use them. So we partnered with MCG, and we created an actual, like, we give you little scenarios. First, we teach you. And then we give you little scenarios, and you get to actually pretend like you're working cases and get the real feel of what it's like to be inside the software, having multiple screens up and doing the work that a case manager would do or utilization manager would do. And then we have the course that is both because when I worked as a case manager, I was responsible for the utilization management on all of my patients. So if, if that's something that you feel would be beneficial for you, we have a combined course. And it's better than taking the two separately because it kind of integrates it a little bit better. So that's why we have the combined course. And th I think that's it. That's what we have. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, those courses are awesome. And if you do take those, I definitely recommend putting them on your resume. Um, yes, it's not going to land you a job, but it's nice to have in your resume to show that you're like dedicated to this field and you're not just kind of swinging at whatever job will take you. <laughs> you're kind of dedicated. You are showing that you want to be in this and you actually like will know what you're talking about, which is helpful when you're interviewing. Um, and then also the basic level of just the robot scanners, the ATS likes to see the keywords and you got some keywords in there. So it's a win-win. Um, I think it's, they're awesome resources for everyone to use. Yeah. And then of course, if you, you can use Sadie's coupon oh, code yeah. and get 10% off. I do have a code. It's 10% off. You can use Sadie 10, S-A-D-I-E 10, um, all lowercase. I don't know if that matters, but. All lowercase um, and no spaces. And no spaces. Yes. Yeah. So that's helpful. A lot of people have done that and they say it's really, it's really a great, you can't get the information elsewhere. Like <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> it's so much. It, it's very helpful. So. If you want to do that, you can, and I'll link that all in our little bio and description. So, yeah. And then I just, a couple quick things to help you actually start looking for these jobs, especially remotely. I don't, most of my, well, all of my stuff is for remote jobs, but um, if you want to get into case management in general, start looking in your local area, your hospital. If you're in a hospital already, that's the perfect place to start. Go to the case management department and see if they're hiring, or just even if you want to shadow and like just show interest, show your face, make them know you. They might not be hiring now, but they might be in six months and they already kind of know you. So that's where I would always recommend going first, even before looking for remote jobs, because a lot of the remote jobs, I would say like 95% of them want you to have experience. Um, so if you could do that, that'd be awesome. If you are going towards remote jobs, I would definitely try to also keep it local or in your state because you have less competition as far as like if you go to the nationwide ones with the huge insurance companies, there's like probably hundreds of other people applying and they're all case managers already. So I would recommend going to your local area, like your city first. Um, if maybe if you can even do a mix one, there's like hybrid roles where it's field and remote, at least you can get a, you know, see what it feels like to work remotely, but also get that experience. 
Um, and they're going to be less competitive, obviously, because you're kind of localized to the pool of nurses in your area. Um, and then for the remote jobs, then start just going out from your area. So if there's nothing in your city, look in your region. If there's nothing in your region, look in your state. Then if there's nothing in your state, there should be some stuff in your state. But if there's not, start looking at like the compact states if you're part of that, because the remote jobs are open. If, if they accept compact nurses, then they accept nurses who have a compact license in any of the compact states. So if nothing <laughs> comes from there, then go nationwide. You don't want to go directly to the nationwide ones because they're so competitive. It's just, especially if you don't have experience. Um, and then again, the specialty, it's the specialization area that you're in. If you have oncology, transplant, behavioral health, even some like women's health, um, try to, you could try to do case management jobs in that specialty and that might get you a better um wait to go into a remote role immediately. It probably won't like guarantee it at all, but it's, it's something to think about. Um, and then your resume, make sure if you are applying to these jobs and you're finding that the job descriptions have things that you know how to do and you have done, make sure you're using their words to describe those in your resume. And like Deanna said before, if you're for example, like a hospice nurse, get creative about your job description and your role and what you're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis because come to find out you're doing case management often and you might not have that in your resume because you don't realize you're doing that or or like it's, you know, another job, it might only be 10% of your job role. So you're like, it doesn't even matter. Well, it does because you want to, you want to show that first. <laughs> so um, yeah, do that with your resume. And then of course, network. Like if you know any nurses who are case managers or a friend or a, your friend's mom or somebody who's a case manager, try to connect with them, especially, you know, the remote, the insurance companies um, and Fun note, a lot of people who work for these companies get referral bonuses. So, I mean, they, they'll probably help you out. Um, so network for sure. That is probably the best way to get into these roles in any case management role is to network and have connections um, beyond just the application button. So I have the remotenurse.com. You can go on there and I have a whole job board. There's over 200 jobs at any given time. And a lot of those are in case management. It's one of the most popular remote nursing jobs. Um, and you can look by your state, your license, and just kind of get an idea what's out there. Um, and then if at the end of this video, you're like, case management is awful, and I don't want to do that, <laughs> then I also have a remote nursing jobs crash course, which goes over 19 other jobs you can do remotely that maybe isn't case management. So check that out, the remotenurse.com. <laughs> All right. Well, that was it. I thank you so much for doing this. I was a care coordinator myself and half the stuff you said, I didn't even know. So <laughs> this is very helpful, like just from an official case management, like expert. <laughs> well, I have to say thank you for letting me just, as you can tell, it's something I'm really passionate about. And my goal, honestly, is that when myself or my family members need a case manager, that there are awesome case managers out there to case manage us and to help yeah. us. And so honestly, my number one goal is to make sure that, you know, anybody who wants to get into this profession can get into the profession and has the tools and resources that they need to actually excel in it so that they're not unfortunate, you know, going through that first year, just hating it and not understanding and, you know, and feeling like they're a failure because you're not a failure. You have a lot of skills that you've, that you can bring to this. You just need, you just need a little hand holding on how to transition properly. And that's what we try to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Hopefully, maybe in the future, thank we can you. do a, a video on utilization management as its own. I just thought of that. So that would be cool. We'll talk soon. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.